So the, uh, the tradition of the natural historian is one truly of, of adventure and, and I guess I'll say more purely uh, to seek that which they don't quite yet know. So when folks go traditionally on an excursion, an expedition, the aim is just quite simply to collect and collect knowledge that uh, might not yet be uncovered, they might not quite know what they're looking for yet, so to collect specimens, collect notes, uh, detailed accounts of whatever they encounter. So it's it's very much documenting an experience. And the nitty gritty, the, the importance, the, the detail, the, uh, the relevance is to be unearthed later, perhaps by other folks, perhaps by people, generations or many generations uh, further on down the line. So there's a strong, there's a strong component of, of artistic discovery, of, of creativity, of, of the adventure of not knowing how this is going. I really started collecting these, these oddities, these, these unnatural items as an outgrowth of, of classic natural history. When, when I'm out there looking for, uh, looking for items in nature, looking for patterns in nature, looking for processes, I don't know what I'm going to come along and what I'm going to come across. So when I find these items, I, I treat them the same way I treat natural discoveries. Not sure what they mean quite yet, but hold on to them to make sense of them later on. And, and, and some of these items in particular just were so striking apparently out of place or things I had never seen before. Not, I presume, unlike the first time Audubon saw his first orchard oriole. What is this spectacular bird? I must have it and find out its relevance later on. And I, and I, and I take the pursuit of natural history and now unnatural history as largely one of the same, a process of discovery. <laughs> when I came across the, the eyeless duck, it was uh, it was a, a point in my career where I had just started working with turtles. It was my first time working in a first time working in a bayou system in, in Houston. And while I was well acquainted with the possible threats in, in research, having worked with rattlesnakes for uh, the better part of seven or eight years at the time, working with young undergraduate students in a in a system where they can be eaten puts the professor at a little bit of under a little bit of stress. So I, I recall distinctly climbing down into the bayou, of course, having to put on the, the airs of the professional and being confident and making folks feel at ease, but being uneasy, facing the notion that, you know, you can run from a snake, but running from an alligator is a different story. So squatting in the water just to scan, just to scan with a flashlight to see, are there any alligator there? And seeing, staring back at me, eyeless rubber duck. when I came across this first Bible was Bibles aren't something you, you throw away. Even, even folks who have abandoned faith for any number of reasons, you don't throw Bibles away, stash them in a box, give them to family, to see them cast off like this. So to see it floating in a bayou in Texas just made me think about who, who threw this away and, and why. I mean, harkens back to more of a romantic breakup where fires are burnt of letters and cards and mementos and some more of a, a violent cast off of, of old ways and old relationships. Well, what I take away from this now looking back uh, a decade or so on these various collected items is that the notion of natural history uh, is forever changed, and, and given that we live in what some scientists are calling the Anthropocene, the, the age of man, um, that the, the notion of the pure, wild, unknown country is, is sadly gone. So it's hard pressed to go and find a, an area not, not full of what I'll call human detritus, just what we cast away. And oftentimes when I say this, people take it as very negative, this tone of environmental destruction and the end is near. But I rather take it as a, as a commentary on what we can learn from studying ourselves, from what we cast away, and stories behind these items, and, and causing people to reflect on what is natural, what is unnatural, and 
ultimately helping folks remove this artificial divide between nature and human. And, and hopefully by, by uh, awakening folks, letting them know that we are part of the system, they understand that we are part of the problem and, and solving these problems as well. So uh, perhaps some environmental reflection here.